one. The most blessed Virgin Mary, when the course of her earthly life was completed, was taken up body and soul into the glory of heaven, where she already shares the glory of her son's resurrection. This doctrine was always believed in by the church and attested to by the saints. For instance, there was a, a devotion to the empty tomb of Mary way back in the 7th century. So this doctrine then has a firm foundation in the scriptures as well, but it was only proclaimed a dogma of the Catholic faith by Pope Pius XII on November the 1st, 1950, before a crowd of half a million people which throngs St. Peter's Square, Rome. Where she has gone, of course, we hope to follow. This is our destiny. In the creed, which we recite every Sunday, we attest to this when we say the words, We believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. However, the assumption doesn't mean that Mary is distant from us here on earth. Even though the angel Gabriel referred to Mary as being highly favoured, God didn't shield her from human suffering if anything, it was heightened by virtue of the fact of being mother of our suffering Saviour. Standing at the foot of the cross mystically unites Mary with the passion of her son. When the centurion literally pierced the human heart of Jesus with a spear, Mary's heart was also pierced with a sword of sorrow fulfilling the words which the prophet Simeon spoke to Mary when Jesus was a baby on the occasion of the presentation. Mary can identify with difficulties which family goes through these days because of similar ones she had to face, such as the doubts concerning the conception of Jesus, being turned away at the inn at Bethlehem, Herod's massacre of the innocents, which must have been a time of heightened tension for Mary and Joseph, the long and dangerous journey to Egypt, the pain of seeing Jesus cold shouldered by his neighbours at Nazareth when he was an adult, among the same people that he grew up with, the growing envy of the Jewish leaders, and finally his trial and execution. All these things and much more must have been testing times for Mary, but they mean that she can empathise with us and help us carry similar crosses. Like her son, the humility of Mary meant that she always put the will of God, howsoever difficult, before her own. But humility didn't mean that Mary was easily cowed. Saint Pope Paul VI, not long since canonised, recounted in one of his encyclicals that Mary was far from being a timidly submissive woman. Being humble like Mary was doesn't mean being cowed into submission or bullied into submission. On the contrary, she was a woman who did not hesitate to proclaim that God vindicated the humble and scattered the proud-hearted. In our prayers to her, she will surely give us the same courage despite opposition to stand up for the truth of the gospel today as she did in her lifetime. As our mother, she is there to accompany us on our journey through life and lead us into a deeper union with her son. So, as we do with our own earthly mothers, let us call often on our heavenly mother so that she will keep us on the path which leads to life eternal. Thank you all very much for listening and God bless you all.